I gained all the weight back mm -hmm. Whoa. and 30 pounds more. I'm either choosing to die or I'm choosing to live. And there so. Hey carnivores, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. As always, drop a comment down below and update me on how you are doing. Today's video will feature a phenomenal success story. She went from this to this. So we're gonna hear all about her successes, victories, healing, and weight loss transformation. I do wanna share that my next 30-day carnivore challenge for the upcoming month is now open for sign up. If you are interested in support and accountability, as well as coaches' guidance to get you started or to get you thriving on the carnivore diet, come check out the Steak and Butter Gang challenges. And this upcoming challenge month will feature an amazing lineup of guest speakers and experts, including Rebecca Heisch, Dr. Sean O'Mara, Dr. Anthony Chafee, Sarah Franklin, and Dr. Tony Hampton. All challengers will be able to submit their personal questions for each of these guests. You will have access to the live call as well as all playbacks to the entire month's meetings and guest speaker Q&As. Come check out the Steak and Butter Gang challenges at the URL shown on the screen, sbgmeetup.com, or click the links down below in the description box. Hi, Bella. Thank you for Hi. having me. Hi, Coach Emily. Hi, Coach Raymond. I'm a SBG member for nine months. My carnivorsary was yesterday, so I've been carnivore diet lifestyle for one year. My name is Amy and I'm 50 years old. Amy, you are now one year carnivore. You told me that in 2020, you were diagnosed with stage three kidney disease. Hmm. Talk, talk a little bit about that. My sugar addiction is what brought on my kidney disease because of the onslaught of the constant sugar on my organs. Uh, my doctor didn't say that, but that's clear what was happening when you look at my blood work and you see all the pre-diabetic numbers. In 2020, my doctor sat down with me and said, your blood work looks like the blood work of a 90-year-old. What is going on? I was overweight. At some point, I started researching kidney health. I came across both the carnivore lifestyle and Dr. Fung, Dr. Jason Fung. And I joined Dr. Fung's private fasting groups. A lot of the other people were keto. I have, I'm a sugar addict, so keto is too far into those little treats and stuff. So anyway, I decided I would try carnivore. So I ate ribeyes mm. only, uh -oh. only ribeyes. And I fasted Dr. Fung style for a month until my next blood work appointment. It brought my blood work about 50% of the way of where it finally ended up in one month. So wow. she said, just keep doing what you're doing. I continued the fasting. I did one three-day fast. It almost killed me. <laughs> I did a, a couple two-day fasts, but I mostly did 24-hour fast. And I thought that was a huge deal. Right. And they were hard. They were hard. Oh, wow. I'll bring that. I'll wow. bring that up later. But those were hard. Like I, I definitely white knuckled them to use Coach Raymond's term. It took me eight months to get my values up where she cleared me, cleared my blood work. My body was still really sick because when your kidneys aren't working well, it throws all those toxins into your bloodstream. Mm. You end up not being able to think. So your body doesn't function as well. I would try to remember who is the star of the Die Hard movies oh wow this is the star of the Die Hard movies <laughs> yes good job coach raymond oh, wow. and so i would think who's the star of the Die Hard movies those are my favorite movies nice. and if i could remember it was bruce willis i knew that that day my brain was okay wow I could not, what? yeah if i couldn't remember i knew that my i wasn't the I toxins a lot of stuff in going. your body yeah. was, it was that bad it was that bad I made a lot of errors at work that year. So anyway, she clears my blood work. It took me eight months to get my values up where she cleared my blood work. And so I'm sitting at my work desk and I don't even know where these came from, but I had gummy bears mm -hmm. in my hand. Mm -hmm. oh. And mm -hmm. the day I got cleared, the day. Oh. And I'm looking at them in my hand, looking at them in my hand. And I'm thinking I'm gonna eat these gummy bears. And it was very casual, no pros and cons. No, I'll get right back on right after. It was very casual. And I ate the gummy beers. And then it took me some time, nine months, but I gained all the weight back mm -hmm. Whoa. and 30 pounds more. Wow. After, in, after, in addition, wow. after 
gosh. After saving, literally saving myself saving from death. Your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how it strong, if, if you're not well nourished, you haven't been through this and it takes over and it, you can just nosedive in it. And of course we know it's not your fault. I must have gone from those little handful of gummy bears full mm. bore right back into my stress relief of eating sugar at my desk. I was tested for autoimmune. I was also tested for a cardiophrenic fat pad, so fat around the heart. My triglycerides were 115. Oh, wow. um, I got my blood birth last week and now they're 50. Oh, yes. um, Wait, hold on. So 150 to 50? Yeah, isn't that crazy? That's amazing. That's great. So August, I decided I would go full carnivore. I was saying to myself, you're not going to see your grandkids. You know, oh, yeah. if you have, you know, someday when your kids have kids, are you going to see them? Probably not. You're not going right. to be mobile. Someone's right. going to have to care for you. You're not going to be able to sit down on the toilet by yourself, walk around the neighborhood. You're, you're going to be dependent on somebody. I'm either choosing to die or I'm choosing to live. And there so which one was I going to choose? And so I decided I was going to choose to live. When you were telling your story about that gummy bear moment, for some reason, I felt gratitude that you went through that. I felt mm -hmm. glad that you had that moment where you decided to eat it. I'm just wondering how we can talk about the whole moderator versus abstainer topic with this gummy bear lesson, because some people, maybe even Amy at that moment would think, I'm a moderator, I can eat these gummy bears right now, and I'll still stay on track, I'll still keep my kidney disease in remission. Who knew, right? I don't think Amy would have known that. No, that actually would have set everything off and brought back all the weight and more. So when it comes to cheating and treating yourself after reaching your health and weight loss goal, how does one navigate that? Yeah. So I want to say on that, the way I realized it is I saw myself on keto doing a slippery slope up, 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 up. And uh, eventually I would go back to my former diet. And I knew, well, there's something wrong with me. At least that's what I thought. Until I saw a Facebook post about just what you just said, Bella, about moderators versus abstainers. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, right. It's kind of like somebody quitting smoking. Obviously, they can't smoke like one cigarette a day and be good because I wouldn't be that kind of person. So obviously, I knew I was an abstainer. When I eat anything off plan, I feel it. And to mm -hmm. me, yes, for some people, that's a curse. To me, that's a blessing. It's like, yay, I feel it. Then I can put a negative impact and see the cost of this for this five minute pleasure that I'm getting, how long it's going to last me. Typically, I've, I've noticed that certain sauces will last up to five days in my body because I just don't feel my 100% self. Is it worth it sometimes, for example, like my kid's birthday party to have something that's a little bit off? Sure, for five days, but at least I put it in my mind. I'm willing to sacrifice five days. But anything else, I really think hard. I'm like, do I really want to do this? I think what Amy went through is so typical when people are going through a health transformation and you're hanging on, you're hanging on, you're hanging on, and you cross that finish line. Um, I've even seen that with people that, you know, they made it through the event and then they get home from the event and... That's when it all falls, falls apart and you just feel yes, this sense of relaxation. I got through it. And then when that sugar or whatever is kind of calling to you, there's part of your brain, the addicted part that makes that literally thinks you'll feel better. And that'll be the only time. It'll just be that one time. Mm -hmm. And so I think that having that um, awareness, what we want to do is we want to get the awareness before the event. You want to, you know, because and then we learned our lesson. Amy learned her lesson six months later. You know, it all came back. It snowballed into something else. And yeah. um, and so I think what we're aiming to do is just talking about these issues, getting these issues out in the open, actually having people explain how that feels in that issue. It exposes that for many of us, that's a lie. We're going to end up feeling so much worse. A lot of what happens in our community is just being really, really honest with ourselves. Mm. Um understanding that, you know, for those of us that, that are on that abstainer road, like we know what way that path is going to go. That's not to say we're not going to make mistakes. We are going to make mistakes, but here's the deal. We have a community to catch us when we fall now. And Amy didn't have that at that moment. She was alone. Yeah. 
And so now it's a different field. And now that, you know, when, when we're in the gang, we're in community, when we have a misstep, we're, that's a normal thing. That gummy bear moment was a very normal moment. But being in a community helps you to not make that moment into the next and the next and the next and make those moments grow until you get, you know, in a really bad situation of relapse. People forget that part of the whole journey of this whole sugar addiction recovery, food addiction recovery is also after you achieved your goal. What are you going to do in that moment? That's actually the hardest one. It's the uh, hardest one. The hardest. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when your goal is, I just got to make through this Thanksgiving dinner and stay carnivore, let's say. What happens when you get home and you plop yourself on the couch and you're like, I did it. Well, now I want sugar, right? That's like the automatic reaction. So Amy, what are your thoughts on all of this? For me, the trigger remains constant, constant. And the trigger is, is stress, whatever yeah. stress that is for you in your life or loneliness or anxiety, whatever it may be. You're looking for something to quell it and you're looking for something that will just make you feel better. And so mm -hmm. when you're reaching for something continuously for years, it doesn't matter what that is. That thing becomes your friend. Mm -hmm. And you become loyal to it. You become one with it so that you have to extricate it from your from your person to get rid of it. Because it is something that has sustained you and allowed you to function. And you don't, you're not going to give that up very easily. Something that allows you to function is something you're going to hang on to. And so when you're a sugar addict and a carnivore, mm -hmm. you have gone completely the opposite direction. You have lost your friend. Your functioning system is off. And now you're in a spot where you have to figure out how to function without it. And, mm -hmm. and truth be told, carnivore, uh, ribeye is not going to do that for you. Mm -hmm. You're not going to eat it and feel mm -hmm. anxiety off. relief. That's not how it works. Yeah, it's right. a progression and a long ter longer term thing. And so you have to replace that with something else in my mind. That mm -hmm. friend, that stress relief is the other piece of it. Yes, you can continue to improve your health which makes you feel better with the with carnivore food and fasting but if you don't address your friend loss the hmm. loss of your of your daily uh stress relief when you can replace that with community something very personal to you that that drives you and keeps you stress free well amy now i'm itching what was it for you Oh, hey. there yeah. we go. What was it for you? She is a leader <laughs> in this muscle movement space. Let's hear it. I decided to start moving again. I started going to Orange Theory, which Coach Raymond used to go to. And yep. uh, I saw that on his YouTubes because I stalked it. <laughs> and uh, so, one of those things where you go, you walk into the place and it's so intimidating and awful. I couldn't go faster than two miles an hour on the treadmill. And that lasted for two months. No incline, flat wow. road. Number one, I felt like I was going to fall. My body couldn't make that motion faster than two miles an hour. So I just stuck with it. In Orange Theory, I could not get up on the bench. Uh, I couldn't take a step up and I had to use the TRX to mm -hmm. physically mm -hmm. help me up. And that's what I did until I was able to step up on the bench. And it's humiliating, but it also exposed me how much my leg muscles and everything had atrophied during my kidney disease. Couldn't do lunges for at least a month, not oh, one God. lunge. I stopped caring about looking, you know, being last and everything, um, nice. being the yeah. weakest. I stopped stressing about that and I started craving not feeling stressed. And I'd walk out of there and no stress in my body, sit back down to work, no trouble. 50 year old. Mm -hmm chick going in there amongst all the tattooed people. So <laughs> when I'm sitting at my desk during the day and I, I have a really busy day at work and I cannot go to the gym, I feel it. Mm -hmm. I feel it the same way that I felt my, my sugar cravings. Wow. I see. Um, wow. My body starts to feel restless. Uh, I feel a little bit depressed. You know, we're always like, treat yourself, pamper yourself, take care of yourself. And now you figured out how to get your food where it needs to be. And now this is your thing that you do. That's like your special Amy time. So it welcome. is. that's exactly right. When I go in there and there's a lot of eyes on me, I feel uncomfortable. Um, and I feel uncomfortable when people ask me about my physique change. Okay. In a way that I still don't know that this is me. Yes. Yeah. I know exactly how you feel. Mm. That happened to me that's, too. Isn't it surreal? Surreal. 
I was the last every time at Orange Theory when I first started, the last person. So I know exactly how you feel. And then now mm -hmm. it was a weird, different world, you know? Mm, yes, uh, people it is. People come up to me and they're like, you know, they're actually congratulating me. And it's just amazing. But you're right. All eyes seem like to be on you. All the coaches knew me, the whole thing. Basically, you're like disassociated from who you actually are. Because when you look in the mirror, you don't recognize yourself. And I really feel that. I feel like I don't know this person yet and I still have to get to know her. That's how I feel. Yes. And it's almost a, it's not a lonely feeling, but it's a, it's a very unsure feeling. Like, I don't know who I, quite who I am and how I'm going to be. So when people tell me great job or whatever, in some respects, I'm thinking, who are you talking to? Right, right. Mm -hmm. I can look at this and just be like, wow, your transformation, your strength. I see that this is who was inside of you the whole time, confidence that, you know, compassion sharing. So I'm just kind of excited as the whole message gets to your whole being and comes together, integrated into your, your new self-image. I still have a disassociation, like looking at myself in the mirror, I'm like, wow, this is me, you know, that kind of issue, right? Like, it's it's like it's not real. Yeah. You tagged me, Amy, three days ago on Instagram in one of your stories. And when I watched and heard what you said, you said that in that story, you heard someone who was never fat, never overweight, never obese, say something about how to lose weight, right? And you didn't connect with this person. But then mm -hmm. when you heard Raymond and Emily's story and how they lost weight because they walked it themselves you felt connected. Can you talk about what happened there? So the powerful thing about SBG is when you are first exposed, first thing you see in the first meetings and in the literature is a picture of Coach Raymond with an inflamed, fatter face, inflamed body, big belly, a very kind of a, a sad look on his face that I can relate to in a, 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 a great deal. <clears throat> and then next to that picture, he's standing there with his six pack. <laughs> and that's very impactful. And then you see Coach Emily's picture. And she looks like a mom. Okay. A loving mom. And has all of her body fat. In places that you think you couldn't lose it, I, you know. Um, and then next to that picture is this beautiful woman who's blossomed and bloomed. And when you look at those pictures and you see that somebody went from here to here, you know that you can trust that person to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Because they lived it and they have the same mental emotional struggle the other day when a person had said this person's always been fit like major fit mm -hmm. and he's a well-known person um that he keeps telling people they should listen to him and people like him who have never been fat if they don't want to be fat and i thought that's a ridiculous statement because it's exactly opposite of what is true that person's not a sugar addict that person doesn't emotionally eat that person has always been a gym addict they've always been a beautiful person okay it's different you go from okay. fat right. girl to fit girl you still are the fat girl in your mind okay mm -hmm. that person has never been been there and so when you when you are learning from somebody that already did it it's so much more powerful it doesn't feel degrading or you don't feel inhibited. You can say how you feel about stuff. And I know that Coach Emily and Coach Raymond know what I'm talking about. When I say these things, they already lived it, already cried over it, already stress mm -hmm. ate over it, all of it. There are a lot of carnivore experts, pundits, doctors who know a lot of things, but they can't help me be carnivore. I can listen to what they say, but when it comes down to the daily practice of learning how to do it, they just did it. They're like, I'm going to eat meat. And that was it. That's not my experience.
If you're in need of help immediately, you can join and start getting help from me, my team of coaches, and all the guest speakers and carnivore doctors that visit the community. Our amazing coaches, including Raymond and Emily, will guide you through every step of your journey, help you troubleshoot, and get you to your goals. And this upcoming challenge month will feature an amazing lineup of guest speakers and experts, including Rebecca Heishman, Dr. Sean O'Mara, Dr. Anthony Chafee, Sarah Frank, and Dr. Tony Hampton. All challengers will be able to submit their personal questions for each of these guests. You will have access to the live call as well as all playbacks to the entire month's meetings and guest speaker Q&As. We start fresh at the top of every single month and we reset our schedules and classes for our feasting and fasting fat loss program that we teach every month. Come check out the Steak and Butter Gang challenges at the URL shown on the screen, spgmeetup.com, or click the links down below in the description box. So, you know, I used to be the guy at the office where I would say my opinion and I was always overlooked. You know that feeling, right? Now I'll whisper something and people look at me. I feel a little uneasy about that because I'm like, guys, you never looked at me before. Yep. You know, it's like a little bit of insult, right? It's like, really? I'm still the same person, just a different skin. I I'm starting to understand because... You know, I tend to do this too. When I look at somebody that looks unhealthy, I'm very judgmental. Um, especially even more so, it's like, hey, you actually I'm more empathetic, really, because you know, I used to be there. So I'm like, you're sick. So I'm empathetically thinking that with them. I'm mm -hmm. like, you can be helped. So I'm looking at it more for a different point of view. But I remember it even back then, as fat as I was, I saw somebody a little fatter. I'm like, yeah, you, you should lose weight. I remember talking to my buddy, we were busting each other up about that kind of stuff. He's like, damn, your, your stomach's looking at me. Yeah, damn, yours is too. So, you know, it's, it's rather interesting how judgmental we really are. But coming from when I got leaner, I start looking at my buddy and like, hey, I can help you. But what's interesting is the difference is I wasn't as judgy. I was more empathetic because it's like, oh, I know what it's like. And I know it's possible to go the other way around. So there is that extra layer of hope that I've never had before. There's no way I'm, I'm just going to be slowly dying and somebody ending up taking care of me. The, the look in the eyes when you were just saying that in the pictures that uh, Raymond and I have on, you know, from our before pictures that there's, you can see our, our broken hearts and our hopelessness. And you can see like, gosh, that picture, I, I had so much abdominal fat. My arms were the size of legs. My, you know, ankles were the size of thighs. Like everything was so inflamed everywhere. And I was just like, Ugh. Like I just was, was downcast. I was so downcast. I think I was taking a picture of like an outfit or something that I was in and I didn't even realize, you know, I, I thought maybe I was, it was flattering if I wore a black tint, but I was, yeah. I was broken hearted inside, you know, it was just walking around yes. like, Hey, I have this, these tent dresses. That's the only clothing option I have. I was size 26, you know, three X and, um, getting around was so difficult, um, yeah. And so I remember that pain, just the pain to move. The, and and my my uh, biggest pain was very much like you're saying is what was I going to cause for my children? What wreck was I going to cause for them? And was there any way I was on this trajectory of, of things getting worse and worse? And was there any way that I was actually going to be able to participate with, in them with life? And mm -hmm. so then to come into that in my 50s, to figure this out, to do the hormonally correct procedures for my body, fasting and carnivore is, you know, has, has given me a totally new life and it's given me that life back. And so I just see that so much in your journey as well. And how, what a difference it makes for our daughters and for them to have seen us go through that transformation. Real quick, let's just go through the room. Amy, how many pounds have you lost so far total? 60. Wow. Emily? 150 pounds. Wow. And Raymond? Uh, 60. Wow. Wow. And Emily, you are how young? What's your age? Uh, I am 52. I started my journey when I was about 47, late 40s when I started. Yeah. Okay. And Raymond? I'm 51. I restarted carnivore probably five times. Oh, sure. Oh. I tried to go back. Yeah, okay. you guys know. 
Okay. I tried to go back. I didn't just say, well, screw it. I'm going to eat bagels and honey. Mm-hmm. I, right. That's what I was eating. <laughs> bagels um, and honey. Dang. <laughs> so I tried many times to restart carnivore and I could not do it. I had a couple bridges. So I took lipase, which is an enzyme. Every time I ate a fatty meal, I didn't want to deal with the diarrhea. So I took it. The other thing I did that was different was after I would eat a meal, my sugar cravings would go sky high. Uh, you guys know. Oh, yeah. It was sky high. So I would take some cream cheese, I'd put it in a bowl, I'd put a tiny bit of artificial sugar and maybe some cinnamon. I'd heat it for 15 seconds and I'd just eat it after my meal. Sugar cravings all the way down. It was the fat, and, fat in that. Yeah, it's the fat. Yeah. yeah. And I also did drink uh, electrolytes, which was something I, I hadn't really done before. That sustained me for three months and I made it and I lost 18 pounds. And of course, during that time frame, nobody notices you that you've lost weight. Mm-hmm. It's the hardest time and no one knows uh, what you're going through and you're, you're, you're alone. You're alone. Since Amy did mention that she really leaned on electrolytes and to this day, she still does. I highly recommend the brand Element and they have the cleanest ingredients as well as a flavor that has zero stevia zero sugar, zero flavorings, just the three electrolytes that our body needs. And each packet looks like this. They're very nice and small, easy to throw in your work bag. You just rip one open, pour it in whatever beverage you drink every day, drink it down and you are good to go. It can really help tackle those adaptation symptoms like headache, fatigue, lower endurance in the gym, and muscle cramping. You all can get a free sample pack with any purchase at the URL shown on the screen, drinkelementt.com slash SBGAL, or you can go to the link down below in the description box. Let's talk about how things kind of turned around, turned for the better. What else helped you greatly to stick to carnivore and change your body all over again? Only one thing. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> anybody that looks at my posts know they know that I'm a huge uh, steak and butter gang fan. I'm a super fan. And the reason is because when I found it, uh, the very first month, it was October. October. I joined in October and I just watched. I just went to every meeting and I just lurked. And it was all very foreign to me. However, I really enjoyed being a part of other people who were going through the same thing. During that time, I was still eating the artificial sugar in the cream cheese blocks. Coach Raymond very adamantly said, if you're going to do the challenge, don't do artificial sugar. There was no gray area on that. It was It was very, very clear that you shouldn't do that. And, I, and in my mind, I was like, I'm not giving that up yet because <laughs> I might give it up and then go have a binge or something. And and to that point, I had not fallen off. I had I had been able to remain carnivore as long as I had that bridge. Two days before the November challenge started, I had gone to eat my cream cheese and artificial sugar and it tasted horrible. Oh, I was really, really pissed off. <laughs> and in my mind, I thought, damn that coach Raymond. and that was the first time I experienced the wizardry because I Mm -hmm. I was planning on trying to give it up on the first of November (laughs) and try the challenge but it didn't taste good and and I you know it was one of those things letting go of another thing that you love and so that was my first uh aha moment there where I was like Okay. So then uh, I started November. The first thing the coaches tell you is it's time to eat until you're uncomfortable. That's what you're going to do. You're going to eat until your Thanksgiving full. Never heard it anywhere else. You know, all the YouTube videos, binge watch, nothing even close. Hmm. And I had witnessed people being like when I was lurking, I had witnessed people's reactions. So I knew it wasn't going to be very easy, but I went through priming. And by the end of priming, had zero sugar cravings at all. And they have never come back. Oh, my sugar cravings, my sweet craving has never come back. How long did you and do priming, Amy? How long? Two weeks, uh, 12 the days. Standard. The, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah yep. the standard. standard. You did the standard. Perfect. Standard. Yeah. I've done some micro and some minis uh, since then. But uh, at that time, I, I did the standard. And in fact, I did the standard calendars all the way through until Mm. i until i didn't do level six yet but i did the standard calendars as written 
all the way through. I was able to, I was able to, um, you learn how to open up your appetite. And I'll say that my appetite didn't open completely during that time frame. Mm. I had to eat all day, all day during priming. It didn't open up until about three months ago. That's when my appetite really opened, but my cravings went away that initial priming. Nice, nice, nice. And then when I went to my fasting, it was nothing like when I did it with Dr. Fung. So when I started to fast on the calendars, Mm. there was no white knuckling. I didn't feel, I was relieved to fast. Mm. Yes. Oh, wow. I was relieved to fast because you're stuffing yourself during priming. Priming. Coach Raymond is one of the only people that say this. Carnivores under eat. We lose our hair. We uh, mess up our hormones. We don't feel like eating, so we don't eat. Well, you still need to eat. And so priming allows you to learn how to eat when you're not hungry. And sometimes you take the first yes. bite and then you're hungry. Yep. It teaches you that you have to nourish your body. If I ate well, I could fast. Yes. yes. These are not Oman fasts that you're talking about. No. <laughs> <laughs> These are hardcore fasts. And, yeah. And so that's the value of the priming as well, that you can go back to it anytime. So on my eating days, I still eat like I'm priming. Yeah. Nice. Love it. Perfect. I got a couple comments and these comments clearly are maybe new viewers who are not quite familiar with this concept just yet, but they kept asking curiously, genuinely curious, wait, so what is Bella doing differently? Because to me, it just looks like she's eating three meals a day. Isn't that normal? Isn't that just what carnivore diet is? Like what is so special about priming? So it's not just three meals a day. It's eating till comfortably stuffed, eating after your coffee, if you have coffee or tea, that is a big deal. People think that's the small shift, but those are wholly different way of looking at things. Comfortably stuffed is actually very important. A lot of people thinking, you know, you eat till you're full and you're done. No, when you eat till you're full, that's when your journey starts. That's when you start eating. So it does become an art there where you have to decide, hey, uh, if I take one more bite, that's going to be problematic. That's when you should probably stop. Yeah. Amy took a really great approach too, where she actually ate multiple times throughout the day and yeah. continues to do that. And so carnivore, you can do that because the food itself gives you really good satiation feedback. And so you can go ahead and, and eat like you're, you're feasting. It's very primal. You think about back then you would have had to get a good feast in, and then you could go a good long time without it. So priming is taking that this two week period and uh, coach Raymond likes to explain it, like getting your gas tank all the way to full. And so then when you kind of move on beyond that, then you're not dipping down low to the bottom of the barrel. That's why we're not running into adrenal thyroid under eating, uh, triggering hormones, triggering binges. That's why we get the cravings out is because we got it to a full tank to start with. And you're just kind of draining a little bit. So you're staying in this zone where your hormones are really happy and satisfied the whole time, even when you're on your fast. If you get to the E on the gas tank showing empty, that's where you start getting the adrenal fatigue, the, yep. the thyroid mm-hmm. issues, because that that's a wow. sign for your body that's saying danger, danger, you know? So yes. it's like, you keep doing this. I'm going to die. Yes. And on paper, when we picture somebody's body at E, we often picture someone who's thin, anorexic, anemic, but you would be surprised. You're at E, even when you are overweight, extremely puffy and over inflamed as easy as it sounds. It actually isn't that easy, but it's a true test, uh, of how, how you can just stay in tune with your body, but also how you can allow this priming to just finish. So you can happily and comfortably move to the next step. It's almost more important. The priming is almost more important than the fasting. Yes. It is more important than the fasting. This is the only, this is the only place you'll find priming too. Nobody else is going to tell you to do this, but the reason it's more important is because when it's like this, your body responds. So for me personally, what I have done for the past year is I have eaten as much as I can, knowing it will help me, my hormones, my hair, uh, my lifting, it will help me. I eat as much as I can on my eating days. Then when I'm fasting, I do my workouts fasted, go back and I feast again. It's just like an animal. You find your kill, you eat your kill. 
And it's you don't have a refrigerator. You eat <laughs> right. as much as you can. You might have to go back and get your family and bring them to your kill and and have all the little cubs eating it. After you're done with that, you don't have another thing to eat. So you're fasting and you're walking back or going toward water or finding you're migrating to wherever the next place that is safe. You're exercising. So it's the way our bodies work. It's the it's the up and down. And that has shaved body fat off me. I know it has. Well, the results are right there wow, in your list. Oh, that's right. Your picture. Yeah, you have to do the eating part though. You, you know, to. like this is a feasted you, yeah. physique. When y'all are looking at these pictures, this is a picture of a woman who feasts and she has not stopped feasting. She's not scared of feasting. She feasts on carnivore. And yep. that's kind of what happens to the body and that transformation that takes place. The key part about priming or feasting is a training in itself. Amy knows that it's just time to eat. And when it's time to eat, it's not like you're really hungry. You're not really getting hunger signals. Mm -hmm. You're just eating. Well, I like that you said, Amy, that you're still very much on your journey. You're mm -hmm. only one year in. Yeah. Only. I mean, I have baby carnivores watching, thinking only. I'm only one right. day in. But mm -hmm. still, if you look at the grand scheme of things, one year is just a year from the rest of your life, right? So you're, you still have a lot of storytelling to share with us in the gang back on my YouTube channel, if you would be open to it. For my viewers who are watching, who are currently struggling uh, at the stage in life where you were last year, can't stop binging, craving for that friend. What message would you relay to them? I would like to say that uh, the reason I'm a super fan is because when you, okay, it's 30 bucks a month. You guys like never say that, but it's 30 <laughs> bucks a month to join SBG. And when you are in the program and you're struggling and you're new, or you've been doing it eight months and you, I mean, we see people, they leave, they fall off and then they come back. We fail and come back. We learn and come back. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're in SBG, you'll see that each month is catered to the learning journey to try and gently coax yourself into the next level. And, and they're not easy either. It's not like you're like, this is a walk in the park. It's not easy. When you start a certain uh, fasting schedule that's in that month, it's challenging. And so you're never bored. But the thing about it is that if you can be a newbie and be exposed to these calendars, this support system in this community will help you so much. Coach Raymond, he doesn't, he's not really a horn tutor, but he experiments on himself continuously year after year and has been all these years he's been carnivore. He's been running these exper experiments on himself, see how he reacts to different things. And then he and Coach Emily have been taking these protocols and applying it to hundreds of clients who are trying to stay carnivore. So you can see that you can feel it when you're doing the program. There is a method to all of it. At the end of that month, there's something that happened to you. Your body learned something new and then the community are there to catch you. you, keep you feeling supported. There are people with worse situations than you that you can commiserate with, cry with. There are people who have done phenomenal things, healed phenomenal things that are inspiring. It's the whole spectrum. So if I were to tell somebody that was new, I would say, come in, don't show your face, don't speak, do whatever you got to do, but come in and just see what it's like, because it literally saved my life. I would have been probably falling back off the wagon. And now I don't feel like that's going to happen to me at all. I'm going to be able to keep going and keep learning and keep being a sponge for it. Whereas I probably wouldn't be here. I would be back at my 197 and worrying about my blood work. Fascinating. Thank you, Amy. Wow. Incredible work. You're wonderful. And you have taken the lessons and have just applied them in your life so beautifully. And now you're sharing them out with the world. It is an honor to have yes. been with you during all of this time and to have you on our team now. And um, I just thank you so much for sharing this. Let's just uh, celebrate Amy together. Oh my gosh. We love you, Amy. Love you, Amy. I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
I really hope you enjoyed Amy's fantastic story, everything that she shared, her struggles, her vulnerabilities. Please take a minute to go follow Amy on her socials. I have linked them all down below. If you want to get in touch with Amy, the best place to do so is in the Steak and Butter Gang. She is part of the Steak and Butter Gang and she is very active, super happy to connect with all of the members who want to get to know her more or who want to know more details about her healing journey. So if you're interested in joining our community, just go to the URL shown on the screen sbgmeetup.com or click the link down below in the description box to read more details about what is included when you become a member of the Steak and Butter Gang. I also wanted to request from all of you watching right now, if you have any requests for guests that you would like me to invite on, whether it be carnivore doctors, experts, any type of specialists, or fantastic transformation stories that you want to hear more about, feel free to comment it down below and put in your requests. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. SVG out.